Blood clots can be fatal and dangerous, but fortunately advances in medical science have allowed for the creation of products that quickly dissolve blood clots, saving lives in the process. In this video, we'll go over seven actions that are extremely important for both avoiding and treating problems linked to blood clots. So let's begin. Number seven on our list is anticoagulant medications. Blood thinners, usually referred to as anticoagulant medicines, are frequently used to treat or prevent blood clots by shrinking or dissolving them. Anticoagulants function by preventing the blood from clotting properly. To stop the production of fibrin, a protein involved in clot formation, they target various steps in the clotting cascade. Anticoagulants help preserve blood flow through the blood vessels by suppressing the clotting process, lowering the likelihood of blockages and related problems. Anticoagulant drugs come in a variety of forms, each with a unique mechanism of action and delivery method. Anticoagulants that are frequently used include heparin. Heparin increases the activity of antithrombin-3, a naturally occurring clotting inhibitor, and is injected intravenously or subcutaneously. Although it takes effect quickly, it needs to be monitored frequently. Warfarin. This oral anticoagulant prevents the liver from producing clotting factors. It takes longer to take effect fully and requires ongoing INR, International Normalized Ratio Monitoring, to maintain therapeutic levels. Direct Oral Anticoagulants DOACs. DOACs directly inhibit particular clotting factors and include drugs like rivaroxaban, apixaban, dabacantrin, and edoxaban. They don't need to be monitored as frequently and have a more predictable effect than warfarin. The medical condition being treated, patient characteristics, potential drug interactions, and overall risk of bleeding all play a role in the decision of which anticoagulant to use. Healthcare providers base dose and treatment duration decisions on the unique needs of each patient. The next position in the list is held by thrombolytic agents. Thrombolytic agents, sometimes known as clot-busting pharmaceuticals, are a family of treatments used in life-threatening situations to break up blood clots quickly. These drugs are mostly used to treat diseases including acute myocardial infarction, heart attack, ischemic stroke, and pulmonary embolism PE, in which prompt blood flow restoration is essential to prevent additional organ damage or loss of function. The body's natural clot-dissolving system, known as fibrinolysis, is activated by thrombolytic drugs. They successfully dissolve the clot and resume blood flow by concentrating on and destroying the fibrin meshwork that makes up the structure of blood clots. Altiplaz, usually referred to as tissue plasminogen activator, TPA, is the most frequently used thrombolytic drug. Thrombolytic therapy can be very helpful in restoring blood flow and improving patient outcomes if it is given as soon as possible. Due to their potential hazards and side effects, it is essential that these drugs be used carefully and under proper medical supervision. Not all patients are candidates for thrombolytic therapy, which is also contraindicated in several circumstances, such as active bleeding, recent surgery or trauma, uncontrolled hypertension, and known bleeding problems. The type and location of the clot, its age, the patient's medical history, and the potential for bleeding all need to be carefully taken into account before administering thrombolytic drugs. Therefore, the choice to administer thrombolytic therapy is often decided based on established procedures and standards by a specialized medical team, such as emergency physicians, cardiologists, or neurologists. Number 5 is Catheter-Directed Thrombolysis. A minimally invasive method called catheter-directed thrombolysis CDT, is used to dissolve blood clots in particular blood arteries. In order to deliver thrombolytic drugs directly to the site of the clot, a catheter must be inserted into the afflicted blood artery. This focused strategy enhances the clot-dissolving medication's efficacy while lowering the danger of systemic bleeding by enabling a more concentrated and localized distribution. When a blood clot has developed in the veins, Deep vein thrombosis, DVT, and pulmonary embolism, PE, are routinely treated using CDT. Rapid clot dissolution and blood flow restoration are the goals of the procedure, which lowers the chance of consequences like post-thrombotic syndrome or recurrent PE. Using imaging methods like fluoroscopy or ultrasound, a catheter is directed to the site of the clot during the CDT operation. Following placement of the catheter, thrombolytic drugs such as altiplaz or urokinase are administered directly into the blood clot. 
these drugs function by weakening the fibrin fibers that keep the clot together, causing it to dissolve over time and allow blood to flow normally through the afflicted channel. Compared to systemic thrombolysis, which administers clot-dissolving drugs all over the body, CDT has a number of benefits. By specifically targeting the clot, CDT can deliver larger drug concentrations at the site of action, boosting the likelihood that the clot will successfully dissolve. Additionally, localized administration lowers the possibility of consequences from systemic thrombolysis that involve systemic hemorrhage. Number four on the list is inferior vena cava, or IVC. The big vein that returns deoxygenated blood from the lower body to the heart, the inferior vena cava, is inserted with a small, cage-like device called an inferior vena cava filter, IVC. An IVC filter's main goal is to stop blood clots from entering the lungs, therefore preventing the potentially fatal condition known as pulmonary embolism, PE. Patients who have a high risk of blood clots but are unable to take anticoagulant drugs or who have had recurrent clots despite anticoagulant therapy often use IVC filters. Deep vein thrombosis, DVT, trauma, surgery, immobilization, and a few underlying medical problems are common causes for the implantation of an IVC filter. A vascular surgeon or interventional radiologist performs the surgery to place an IVC filter. Depending on the patient's particular requirements, IVC filters could be either temporary or permanent. The choice to utilize an IVC filter should be decided specifically for each patient after taking into account their unique situation and consulting with a diverse team of medical experts. The next amazing product is compression stockings. Compression stockings, commonly referred to as support stockings or compression socks, are specialized hosiery items that exert varying amounts of pressure on the legs. The pressure applied by compression stockings is greatest at the ankle and progressively decreases as they move up the leg. This progressive compression aids the muscles and veins in pushing the blood back towards the heart, which improves blood flow. Additionally, the compression aids in preventing blood from accumulating in the lower extremities, lowering the danger of blood clots and swelling. There are several compression levels for compression stockings, from mild to heavy compression. A healthcare expert should decide the proper compression level according to the individual ailment being treated. It is significant to remember that not everyone should wear compression stockings. When someone has a condition like peripheral artery disease, PAD, or skin infections, they might not be advised to use them. Before using compression stockings, it's always advisable to speak with a medical expert to make sure they are suitable and secure for your specific needs. Number two on our list is external pneumatic compression devices. The use of external pneumatic compression devices, sometimes referred to as sequential compression devices, SCDs, or intermittent pneumatic compression IPC devices, is a medical procedure that helps to increase blood flow to the legs and avoid blood clots. External pneumatic compression devices are designed primarily to stimulate the normal muscular contractions that take place during walking, thereby enhancing blood flow and reducing the risk of blood clots. The apparatus compresses several parts of the legs in sequence, starting at the foot or ankle and working its way up. In between compression cycles, the pressure is released, allowing the blood to return to the heart. They are especially helpful for people with restricted or no mobility because both of these conditions can cause sluggish blood flow and an increased risk of blood clots. To assure their acceptability and efficiency in each unique situation, however, adequate usage and individual assessment are crucial. The top position on the list is held by Tissue Plasminogen Activator or TPA. An injectable medicine called tissue plasminogen activator is used to dissolve blood clots, especially in cases of acute ischemic stroke or pulmonary embolism. The body's natural clot-dissolving machinery is activated by TPA. It targets and activates plasminogen, a protein that transforms into plasmin, an enzyme that dissolves fibrin, the main building block of blood clots. TPA aids in dissolving blood clots by encouraging the conversion of plasminogen to plasmin, allowing blood flow to the injured area to be restored. In cases of acute ischemic stroke, giving TPA within a certain window of time after the beginning of symptoms can assist to restore blood flow to the brain, potentially reducing or even undoing the damage brought on by the stroke. Similar to this, TPA can be used to break a clot in the pulmonary arteries in pulmonary embolism situations, reducing the obstruction and enhancing blood flow to the lungs. 
So these were the seven amazing products that can help in dissolving blood clots. Are you aware of any other such interesting products? If yes, do let us know in the comments below.